Stay tuned for the planet Earth's most relevant newscast. Broadcasting from Sector 17G of the Milky Way Galaxy, we present you a program that is a strange combination of newsworthy and non-newsworthy. Funny at times and extremely non-funny at others. Ladies and gentlemen, Earthlings and Lunars, we present to you Belmont Live. Welcome to episode 48 of Veilmount vale Live. Tonight we have the perfect show. I'm Anne Marie Scott. And I'm Jody Newham. Here's what's on tonight The Columbia Basin Trust. Is it a Saudi plot to ensnare our youth? Or a beneficent group helping kids find voices? Also tonight, Larry is lazy. Watch Mackenzie Booth's first short film about a revolutionary who rethought how chores could be done. And. It's fall, people. So it's time for a psychedelic bike ride. Later, weather doctor Keith Hydorn speaks about his new book, The Field Guide to the Bizarre and Creepy Natural Phenomena. Let's talk about politic opportunities. Chat up a federal politician on November 13th. And your member of parliament will help you get a passport. Get one soon. This country is going to help. Also this week, an animation from the Gulf Island Film School. It's all about brain hemorrhages and birds. Finally, television for all ages. This worm's a winner. Zachary Schneider predicts the future using caterpillars and string. Also, we're joined by musician Ragu Lokanathan. Who now? And these are just the things we're talking about. Factor in what we're not talking about, you'll get it all. Speaking of what we're not talking about... Tonight, we're not promoting our new clothing store. It's called the Cat's Meow Boutique. As news anchors, we resist the temptation to tout our new venture on television. It's located in the Gathering Tree. So, full disclosure, we won't be promoting that here. Fashion items at low, low prices. It's a bit of a conflict of interest. Beautiful items, like this blouse. <clears throat> Awkward a bit. The Cat's Meow Boutique, located at the Gathering Tree. Okay. Meow. Moving along. Shall we begin, Jody? Why, yes, Anne-Marie. It's no secret that Canada is going down the tubes. That's for sure. But thankfully, our federal politicians are stepping up to help regular Canadians out. Wow, they're going to fix this place up? No. They're helping everyone get passports so they can go someplace nice. Meow. Here's MP, Kathy McLeod's assistant, Linda Krupp, talking about a passport clinic on November 13th. So Linda, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Now tell me what brings you to Belmont today. I'm here on behalf of Kathy McLeod, Member of Parliament. I'm her constituency assistant. We're going to do a passport clinic here in uh, Belmont on November 13th. We're also going to have a coffee and tea party okay. that day. Right on, right on. Now, is it fancy dress? Oh, come as you are. Okay, okay, wonderful. <laughs> Which is, in Vermont, fancy dress? About how much time will it take? Oh, it's going to take... Providing everything goes well, which it should, two and a half to three weeks, um, if you've given all the information that we need. We need your mother's maiden name, we need your birth certificate or a Canadian citizenship card. When we have everything in order, two and a half to three weeks. Great. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Andrew, and we'll see you on the 13th. Excellent. Will do. We all know kids are lazy and slothful, but this kid's got it figured. Here's our newest volunteer's first short film on Bailmount Community Television. Welcome to Lazy Time with Larry. Hi kids and welcome to this week's episode. Mom has made this boring old chore list and I have to do all of it before I can watch my hockey game. Let's get started with taking out the garbage. So I'm gonna show you boys and girls how to take out the garbage, lazy stuff, okay? Okay, so first you get to take garbage, you take a rope, and you pull open the door. Grab the garbage and you just swing. Okay. Larry, that almost hit me. That's just our neighbor, Mr. Olson. Lazy Larry, get a job. That's me. Moving on. Okay, next up we have laundry. Okay, here we go. Last but 
not least, put away groceries. Okay. Tune in next week when we continue with the next episode of Lazy Time with Larry. Good work, Larry. Nice writing, Mackenzie Booth. Say what you like, but lazy kids don't make films. If I were to say that a large, well-funded organization with ties to the United States was working to influence our children, would you believe me? Depends if you said it on television or not. I'm saying it now. Michelle Dontremont and Wayne Lundberg are part of the Columbia Basin Trust. They want you to have an iPad. They just need your input and your parents' credit card info. What has brought you folks to Vermont? We're working under a, a strategic plan for youth initiatives that's four years old now. We're in the process of consulting throughout the basin and Vailmont's uh, uh, one of those communities that we're consulted with in developing a new strategic plan to take us forward. It's been four years. What are the pressing issues? We think we know a lot about what's going on, but we want to consult to make sure that we actually know what both people working with youth and involved with youth say, and also what youth say themselves. Well, that's interesting because I've never heard a consultant come to Velma and, and say, we want to make sure what we already know. <laughs> it's more kind of down the nose. Well, you know, and I'm not <laughs> saying we know it. I think intuitively we feel we've got a pretty good pulse. We're based out of the Castle Gar office, both of us. Uh, uh, Belmont's a long ways away. You know, there's a lot of similarities throughout our, our basin, but there's a lot of differences too. Just a quick correction. Actually, Castle Gar is a long way away. <laughs> Belmont is very close. Yeah, well, you know, Central, point, taken, point taken, point <laughs> taken. So, Michelle, right. what, what, are the, what are the opportunities here? Well, uh, Scratch Magazine is a publication that was created out of one of the very first youth forums that CBT hosted. And uh, the youth, um, it was a group of about 100 youth um, that came together for a weekend. And what came out of it was that they wanted a publication that would connect the youth of the basin and give them an opportunity to have a voice. Um, everything that we publish, um, we pay the, 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 the youth for their work, so um, we pay for the, for the photos and the poetry. And uh, for the writers, we have several youth who write articles, and we pay them for the work, and they work with us to uh, make sure that they're growing as writers and that their articles are, uh, are, are as best as they can be for publication. Um, we have a local writer here from Valmont, Mackenzie Harley, has written an article for um, the upcoming Scratch, which is going to be out next week. You know, uh, Mackenzie, it's okay that you're doing a little bit of work for these guys, but you realize your home is here <laughs> in Velma Community Television. He's a great interview, by the way. In order to become involved in Scratch, um, the Scratch magazine, people just have to get down to Castle Bar. So no, hike down. Yeah, no, not at all. Oh, um, yeah, great idea. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's easy. It's, um, you can go to the website and, and simply upload your work. Very easy to, uh, to be a part of it. We are putting a, a survey online. It will be up and running, I think, by the time people see this interview. Uh, we're hoping to get a good response from that, uh, partly because we're giving away a free iPod Touch uh, to one lucky survey uh, mm -hmm. person that's, that's finished the survey. Unfortunately, not everyone gets a free iPod Touch. So, so everyone gets a free iPod Touch? No, no, I think you're misquoting me there. Okay. <laughs> right. Thank you guys for coming in and checking into Velma. Um, I, you know, it's really great that you guys recognize that uh, even though we're up here, we're really in the center <laughs> of your service area. You know. Yeah, okay. you're at the heart of the trust. The heart of the trust, indeed. <laughs> indeed. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Great. Great. Those louts from Castlegar come up here like a Scotsman on a Roman holiday. Not really. Keith Hydorn wrote the book on natural phenomena. Here he is. Keith Hydorn, PhD. What is your background in? Uh, my PhD is in meteorology slash climatology. I have a master's in oceanography as well. Right on. So you know that this climate change thing is just a big hoax. Yeah. Like you're in on that. Yeah, eh? that's, that's why, that's why we're, we're so much warmer than we should be. <laughs> and dry. That's just the studio lights. Oh, Don't worry about okay. that. No, no. <laughs> Tell me about your relationship with these subjects, because it's not just 
Uh, it seems to me not just meteorology, but many yeah, things. Yeah, but well, half the book, three chapters are atmospheric related, right. and those are my three plus the introduction. I've actually had discussions with you outside of this about exciting phenomena. Um, you're interested in those. Yeah. Something yeah. you've been interested in for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I grew up in outside Chicago, and thunderstorms there are, are a variety that you don't know about anywhere in Canada, including Ontario. Yeah. Uh, and so that was kind of my fascination, my first, about age 10, my first real interest in, in weather and wanting to study it. What, what's so special about the thunderstorms of Chicago? Oh, I, they're just, they're consistent. They're heavy, consistent, like lightning can go on for nine straight hours. Wow. The sky's so dark that midday looks like night, you know, and the thunder rolls. So I would get out and watch a thunderstorm come rolling into our, to the home, my hometown, and I stand there on the, uh, the front lawn and orchestrate the thunder. Because if you can see the lightning, of course, with the delay time, you can see if the lightning goes across the sky, you can just do a, you know, like a, <laughs> like a, like a conductor in an orchestra. Oh, fantastic. And bring it up. Who's the target audience? Uh, just about anybody from, you know, you probably could say junior high up. I've always said, and when, when I started out the Weather Doctor website, it actually was going to be called Weather Eyes, because Weather Eyes are always looking up, is what I said. And at the time, I was just upset that everything was being blamed on the weather because of an El Nino year. And, sure. You know, uh, the president got a cold. It was because of El Nino, and the Canadian economy was down, and the prime minister wasn't his fault. It was, it was <laughs> you know, El Nino. And, right. and like, so I, I wrote, started that website to counteract that. And, uh, looking at like 10, 10 things you can look at in the sky that you may not think of and, and how to use all your senses in, in watching the sky. Mm -hmm. So it kind of rolls on through uh, the phenomenon that are discussed in here. Okay, when people want to find your website, um, where do they go? To Google the Weather Doctor. The Weather Doctor. And you'll get, get to right there. On. And there's uh, <clears throat> links on there to order the book from Amazon. Perfect. How does your love of the weather manifest in your sort of daily life and what you do now? Well, I'm a, I'm a continual looker at the skies. Okay. And if the sun goes down and there's no weather going on, I'll go out and look to the stars. And I know a lot of people confuse meteorology with meteors and right. astronomy, so I get a lot of questions there. But, but uh, you know, there's nights here that well, there was a night last summer, and the, the cloud across the mountains there was just extremely bright because it was a full moon. Yeah. I got home and there was lightning flashing over canoe, lightning over McCurdy. I pulled my chair out, sat down there and watched it. And as the sun or the, the moon went went behind in the front of the clouds, and the lightning in all sides, and I called, saw a couple of meteors come through, and it was it was a fantastic thing. Do you feel hemmed in at Vailmount at all because of the mountains yeah. cutting yeah, out here? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. But, I, but I, I must say that I, that I came from Victoria, which had almost no difference in the weather. Okay. Winter was usually overcast. Summer it was usually all clear. And after having grown up in the Great, in the great Lakes area and spent the first what, 40 years or so of my life there, it's weather changes frequently, it's, it's quite a bit different, and of course you can see mostly to the horizon. Right. And that's one thing, like you know, when you say sunset, but sun disappears two hours earlier here. <laughs> so you miss some of that uh, good stuff, like there's chapters in here, if you get out to the right spots or out of, out of the area, looking at the twilight arc which is a difference, differential of color on a clear day. If you look and watch the, the difference in, from the sun, the red of the sun, and then mm -hmm. it branches out, and when you get up to the top, you get a violet haze, and that's actually the Earth's shadow being, being cast onto the atmosphere. Wow. Well, great. Well, thanks so much for coming in and, and talking to us about it. Um, I think a lot of people around here will be interested in it. I hope so. Yeah. And, you know, Fantastic. Thanks great. so much. Thanks, Andrew.